people that said that the Speaker of the House, Roger Hanshaw, is now trying to work on a solution to this mess with the personal property tax rebate and uh, being punished for paying the entire year up front, which a lot of people like to do. So uh, we have asked CPA Ken Apple to enter the studio and try to make sense of what appears to be a bit of a tax mess here. Ken, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. Is that all I get? <laughs> but what, what were you expecting? I was told that if I came on Friday morning, I would have a, a nice introduction with rhymes. <laughs> oh, no. No, you were wrong. You were, you were not told that by anybody here with any type of uh, supervisory experience, I'm sure. So you, you didn't write me a rhyme? Well, it's not 835 yet. Would you like to come back in 20 minutes? I wrote you one. Oh. Well, do, you need, do you need music? I don't need music. Oh, all right. But, uh, oh, how please. Long, when did you write this? You, before Last we night. get started, my wife is at home ecstatic now. Ken Apple's on, that makes her day. So, And, and with rhyming. <laughs> and with rhyming. You're sure you don't want music? I'm sure I don't want music. All right. Well, let's have it. So Rob and the Friday morning gang were planning a trip. They wanted to visit a place that was hip. A suggestion was made to visit Nairobi. No response from Rob. He was eating ravioli. <laughs> Another suggestion was to check out Uganda. No response from Rob. He was eating lasagna. I guess, uh, we go, yeah. <laughs> Several suggestions were made by Joe Ferretti. No response from Rob. He was eating spaghetti. <laughs> Paris was mentioned. They could see the Mona Lisa. No response from Rob. He was eating pizza. New York, New York. Uh, but the people there are phony. No response from Rob. He was eating minestrone. <laughs> An around-the-world trip. Uh, but they'd have to hit the lotto. No response from Rob. He was eating gelato. They couldn't decide. They started to frown. So they finally decided to stay here in town. So now broadcasting live on TV, Facebook, and radio is your talk show host extraordinaire, the one and only. Rob Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely yeah. done, Ken. Nicely done. I still think that would have worked with some music on it either. <laughs> well, you can work on that in your off time. I could have I could have given you a nice Italian theme there, Ken. I'm I'm uh, I'm humbled. Thank you so much, sir. And don't you feel bad? It's kind of like Christmas. You give somebody a gift, you don't have a gift, they don't give you one in return. You feel kind of bad, don't well, you? Well, but he's been giving the gifts yeah. for your, for weeks and weeks yeah, now. But, he but finally got one Ken, back. Not for Ken Apple. Listen to this guy across the table from He pronounces Tesla correctly once and he starts bringing it at me. Uh, well, uh thank you, Ken. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I wasn't sure who the co-hosts were going to be, but when I pulled in and and saw the 2017 Tesla out there. I knew who one of the co-hosts were. I can pronounce that correctly. Now, how do you know? How do I know that that's a 2017? It's not. Uh oh, it's not. What you don't tell the assessor that. <laughs> that's how I know. I know. <laughs> because there's, you're not listening, are you, Larry? Hess? There is way more information available <laughs> than I think should be. So apparently, when I when I pull Mr. Stubblefield's personal property tax return, there's a 2017 Tesla on there. You know, I like. Dated. I would like to state that uh, neither Bill Stubblefield nor Mike Hyde have ever written me an intro, nor any of my other Friday crew members. I give, every week I give and I give, and it took Ken Apple to return. Ken, Ken thank you so much. You're quite welcome. I thought you deserved it. I, I tried for the better part of a day, and <laughs> after many, many, many hours, I read and said, this is garbage, so I threw it away. So, But I tried, Rob. I tried. You know, it's it's what's in the heart that counts, Bill. Not necessarily. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> We don't, we don't have the talent that you have, Rob. We don't have the talent. That's what I was trying to say. You told us, don't try to do this at home. That's true. Yeah. That's well, true. So we didn't. And, and, I, <laughs> and, and I'm a professional. And he's I'm trained. a trained professional. Yeah. yeah. There, there are many who have tried this at home and failed. Uh, Ken, let's talk taxes. Okay, let's do that. And uh, let's get to this personal property tax mess uh, that was created when the citizens of the state voted against Amendment 2, thereby complicating any type of personal property tax refund. Okay, so, so let's start by saying that this, the West Virginia State Tax Department is not foreign to this concept, okay? Uh, so you, you were talking this week about the homestead exemption, mm -hmm. all right, and, and that's been covered well. The homestead exemption is $20,000 of assessed value. 
uh, that comes off if you're a senior citizen or if you're permanently disabled. Uh, that has been in place for decades, and as some of your, your uh, guests have commented, it's, it's not sufficient maybe for the Eastern Panhandle and, and other areas of the state where values are high. Uh, but several years ago, and uh, it, it's probably been 10 years now, uh, they created what I call a supplemental homestead exemption, which you qualify for on income. So everybody in the state that is on the homestead exemption in January, they get a piece of mail from the West Virginia State Tax Department that says you may be entitled to a credit on your tax returns, and it's a credit against your real estate tax if you qualify on income. And the amount of that credit varies by county. So the highest number in the state goes to Jefferson County. Last year, most of the people in Jefferson County, were, if they were eligible for that credit, it was $240, uh, where in Morgan County, it was only $200, and in Berkeley County, it was somewhere in between. Uh, so this, this is not a foreign concept to West Virginia taxes. Uh, you attach a copy of your paid real estate tax bill to your tax return, or you upload it if you're filing electronically. And if you qualify on income, you get that credit. This personal property tax credit will be done exactly the same way. So when they were talking about this credit, they were first talking about a rebate where they were going to send out checks to everybody. And I think somebody finally figured out, hey, we're already equipped to do this on, as a credit on your state income tax. And just like the additional homestead exemption, if you're not required to file a West Virginia income tax return, or if you are required to file and you don't have a tax, you can still get your credit back. So you, that's true on the additional homestead exemption. It will also be true on the personal property tax. All right, so now... Uh, I don't know if you're pausing for dramatic effect or if you're waiting for a question. <laughs> uh, e either one. You All can right. tell me to continue no, keep or you going, can man. ask me a question. Keep rolling. All right, so the first time I read the bill that they passed, I said, okay, well, this, this bill says that I get a credit after January 1st, 2024 for any personal property taxes that are timely paid. So I thought, well, if I wait and pay my second half after January 1st of 24, but before February 28th of 24, that's going to be a timely paid tax. So I figured that they would come and amend that law to get rid of that, and they haven't done it. So now everybody's on board. Uh, you know, everybody that, even the assessors are advising people, only pay half of your personal property tax. And everybody that I've heard talk about that, uh, especially here on air, is talking about your automobiles. Mm -hmm. But I want to make it clear that this is also true of small businesses' personal property. So when I get my personal property tax bill from my office, I tend to pay the whole year as soon as I get the bill. I only paid half a year this year because that credit is after January 1st, 2024 also. The complication for people is you're not going to get another bill. So if you choose, like I did, to only pay half, you have to remember to go back in and pay your second half. If you don't remember to go pay it, the only notice you'll get is your name in the paper in May that, <laughs> that you're late on your taxes. So when I paid my half, uh, the lady that, that waited on me said, well, I'll see you in February. I said, no, you'll see me on January the 2nd because I'm not going to forget to pay my second half. So uh, I, I am sure there are people who have already paid their full year's personal property tax. And uh, as, as Matt noted yesterday, there's nothing on the bill advising you that you should wait. I mean, uh, the assessor said that the dates are on there. Yeah, the dates have always been on there as to how much you pay if you're paying the first half or the second half. Uh, so if they come up with some solution for those people so that they'll still get their credit for the second half, I would applaud that. But uh, to avoid having to have that done, just all of your listeners – be careful, only pay a half of your personal property tax right now, and remember to go back in in January and pay your second half. So, Mike, you're a member of the House of Delegates. I don't know if you saw what uh, Speaker Hanshaw was talking about yesterday in regards to trying to find some type of fix for this, but 
Tell me legislatively, what are the possibilities of fixing this and what would be the manner to do it? Well, I don't personally know what the solution is to it, but I would be open to a solution as long as it doesn't make it even more complicated. Um, you know, is there a way to pay it all in 2023 like we normally do and still get the credit in 2024? I don't know. If if that was a solution, I think that would be the easiest solution if you could do that because that means everybody's timely. I'm also wondering how this affects the county and how they – typically get their money on a regular basis and now they're only going to get half of what they normally get because most people pay all up front in in you know this time of year so how does that affect their and and maybe bill you can answer this a whole lot better than i can being in the in the county commission yeah uh keep in mind we're talking about the personal property tax and not all the taxes uh, the bulk of the income Correct. comes in with from real estate uh, tax real the real property yeah. right but how would it, how, just the personal property yeah. how would that affect the county commission's uh cash flow i, I guess is is the um the appropriate word um since they would only be getting half of the the car and the, the business equipment in, inventory yeah, the county uh budgets for the bulk of the money coming in the fall right. and the, the rest coming in the spring. But their spending profile, the spending budget, is evenly distributed through the year. So I do not think it have any real impact at all. Okay. Well, and if, if most people's personal property tax bills are like mine, a half a year this year is equal to a full year last year. Because the value of your vehicle probably went up. Yeah, not not only my vehicles, but I didn't add any new equipment to my office, and my office personal property tax went up also. So the assessment went up on my old computers too. Why is that now? When Larry Hess was in, he was exp he was talking about on the real estate side the reasons they went up. One, we've got a uh, the assessed value throughout the county has gone up in uh, through the last year or so. We've also uh, um, gotten a lot more growth. But why would that affect the personal property? I, I don't know. I I did a lot of research yesterday because I knew it was coming on today. And I, I went to the assessor's office in like 15 different counties in West Virginia. And how they assess personal property and older motor vehicles varies greatly by county. So apparently they have the, the counties themselves have a lot of discretion on valuation of personal property. I thought, at least for the automobiles, I thought they used Kelly Blue Book primarily. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about an older car that's no longer in the book okay and even those appreciated oh yes in, yeah in, in, absolutely. In, uh, taxation value mm -hmm. yeah well we all know used cars cost a lot more than they did even a couple of years ago yes i mean if you happen to have a 94 bmw3 for instance <laughs> I noticed you looked right at Bill when you said that. That's a, t that's a toy. That should not. That should not be considered the car. Yeah. I mean, it's a 1994, so it's not in the current book. So, yeah. so it's assessed for three hundred dollars. That's about right. No. <laughs> uh, three hundred dollars being sixty percent of what they think it's worth bill i'll give you twice that for it no 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 <laughs> it's a toy it's a it's a beloved toy Mike. <laughs> but but there are other counties in the state where on a vehicle like that they require you to provide a picture of the vehicle so they can assess the condition and go to an old car's price guide and value it i was gonna say if you look at like a 67 corvette <laughs> it's it's not going to be three hundred dollars i mean it could it could be possibly be three hundred thousand dollars so um I, I wonder where they're getting their assessments a lot of times right a lot I'm more curious about the, the equipment in your office you were talking about ken as to how that how that would get caught up in the this well good yeah. yeah i want to divert the spotlight from stubble field to something else <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you bill you're, you're under the spotlight let's, let, let's go back to something you said earlier ken you were talking about homestead exemption yes. then you use the uh the example of jefferson county and morgan county and that was a uh prorated uh percentage uh or consideration of the income that you brought in um and now we've talked about personal property the, you, these are three separate items, yet they were kind of merged in the same paragraph. So I think there needs to be some space, at least between the uh, uh, the uh, the income 
is determined in Jefferson County, Morgan County, and Berkeley. Okay, so so the income limitations on the additional homestead exemption are statewide. They don't change by county. So the additional, that's an addition to the $20,000. Correct. Okay. The amount of the rebate that you get varies by county based upon the assessment of the houses in that county. And what is the income level before you so – to? to get the homestead exemption uh, i don't know off the top of my head but it's uh it's not that low okay, okay. so I, I would say that m- most senior citizens in the rest of the state that aren't in a high growth area qualify for it and then what is the the age you have to be to apply so it's anybody who gets the regular homestead exemption which is age 65 or permanently and totally disabled Okay. at any age. Hey, Bill, before you go, Joe Ferretti posted, I believe the governor by executive order froze personal property assessments in 2020. That's the right. order expired and personal property values are now being adjusted. That's okay. right. Have we gotten to the point, Ken, that it's difficult, if not impossible, for someone to fill out their own taxes? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's so many complexities, so many, uh, uh, so many options that you can follow. Yeah, there's not only options, but uh, frankly, I would not be able to fill out a tax return by hand. I mean, I could do one, but it would probably take me two days because uh, now that we have computers, that's the way they, they create new tax law. So there's all these limitations and everything that if you didn't have a computer, you'd have to go fill out worksheet after worksheet to figure out how much your credits and deductions would be. I would say that you probably can do it on your own i just don't know that you'll get all the benefits that you would if you were to take it to somebody who who knows all the ins and outs and and how to do it properly and get to the most back out of it i yeah. want to go back to the personal property tax and paying it all at once up front yes. why is that so difficult to get rebated to you uh, because uh, from my perspective when the west virginia state tax department gets your 2024 income tax return sometime in february march april of 2025 they're asking you to attach to that tax return your paid receipt and that paid receipt is going to say that it was paid in 2023 Uh, so it will be easy for them if you've got a paid receipt that says 2024 and it's paid at a discount or with no interest then it was timely paid if you're going to attach a 2023 full year one then somebody there is going to have to figure out how much of that was for the first half, how much was for the second half, and adjust your rebate accordingly. Is that really that difficult, considering what software programs can do in 2023? Yeah, somebody's going to have to key in that information, though. Okay, well, isn't that one person having to do five minutes of work a lot better than a million people having to refigure what amount of taxes they're just all of a sudden supposed to pay owe or not pay yeah i don't disagree with you but i don't know how the staffing is at the west virginia state tax department and and correct me if if i'm wrong but isn't this just a one-time issue i mean it it, after after january 2024 in, in the fall of 2024 you can pay your entire tax bill so that in 2025 you get a a an advantage of a year and a half and then going forward from that, it would just be every year. Is that's that correct? Ex- that's exactly right. And that was that was a question that was asked either yesterday or the day before that, that they weren't sure of the answer on. Uh, the way the bill is written, it says, I get a rebate on my 2024 taxes for any personal property tax that was timely paid during 2024. So in my case, that's going to be a year and a half's worth of personal property, both on my vehicles and on my business inventory. Ken, do you have any idea what, for the typical person, how much is involved in the uh, in one half your personal property? Are we talking about hundreds and hundreds of dollars? Are we talking about twenties of dollars? It depends on what you own. Yeah, I realize that. Uh, I realize that. I'm saying for the for I the have average. I have several clients whose personal property tax bill is higher than their real estate tax bill because of all the toys they have. Uh, RVs are the big one. Mm. I mean, if you've got a $200,000 RV and it's being taxed as personal property, not real property, mm-hmm. and, and you've got a $200,000 house, the taxes on your RV are twice what they are on your house. 
So, yeah, it's not unusual for me to see personal property tax bills for a year of $3,000, which is more than most houses. Well, wow. So half of that's 1500 bucks, mm -hmm. and that's real money in your pocket. Right. That's not a deduction. Yeah. That's a credit. That's an astounding amount of money to have to pay every year on it, a vehicle you're already own. And it's, it kind of took the wind out of my sail. The point I was getting ready to make, and I will not make it now because Ken gave me a convincing counter argument, is that uh, if it was just a few dollars, uh, the biggest thing is, is the fact it's different. It's something we have not done before, and people do not respond well to any sort of change. And so this has developed a lot, of, developed legs, probably more so than I thought was was really appropriate but Ken's making a point that in certain cases it is very it is a real consideration so so this year pay half your personal property tax and uh, everything is uncomplicated after that if you pay yes. the full amount this is where the complications that's exact and yeah and only for the amount that you would that you would get reimbursed mm -hmm. and so and then you have to remember to pay the second half of your personal property yeah. tax uh, in the first quarter of uh, 2024. Right, because if you're late, then you don't qualify anymore. Right. Even right. if you pay after the the deadline in in February, if you if you pay Ta before, you timely paid is ha is actually paid. in the legislation. Right? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. But a point that we kind of alluded to, I was going to make a few minutes ago, and we got sidetracked. Went on is that I have. How come, Bill? When we when Mike and I ask questions, it's getting sidetracked. <laughs> I noticed. I noticed that if if Mike and I are asking questions, yeah. we're sidetracking yeah, the conversation I, I, because Ken and I have a very de defined path we're going down with a lot of cogent information, good information. Mike, I'm just going to turn our mics off because we're getting in the way of the show. Apparently, <laughs> go ahead, Admiral. <laughs> yeah, I have called the tax office on occasion, and I have invariably been frustrated with the lack of information I've been able to get out of the tax office. Which tax office are we talking the about? The West Virginia tax office. Okay. West Virginia. And, uh, uh, and if it's something that's, that's cut and dry, sure, they can provide information. But if there's anything out of the ordinary, it would be, I have personally found it difficult information. So it kind of builds upon what Ken says, uh, that there's a, uh, uh, it's, if you get away from the, Cut and dry, the predictable. Uh, it's uh, it's it's more it's fairly complicated. Uh, Ken, have you gotten a lot of questions about this personal property tax situation? I have not. No. And and as complicated as it is, it, at least it's less complicated than the Berkeley County ambulance fee. So <laughs> I wonder how many people are aware of these situations anyway. How many people are aware of this personal property tax scenario where where you can actually get a rebate? What percentage of the population do you think is aware of it? Twenty. Well, before the last two days, I think it's gotten a lot of visible, a lot of press yeah. the last couple of days. Well, Prior to that, been a very small number. I wonder how many people have already gone ahead and paid and yes. had no idea yeah. they could get a rebate. Yeah. 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 Ken, uh, what do the quarterlies do uh, uh, for uh, the rest of this year? The quarterly. Quar yeah, if you pay quarterly taxes. Uh, you're talking about personal income tax? Personal income tax, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so the the first quarter was due on April 15th, which makes logical sense because the first quarter's over and now you've got to April 15th to pay it. The second quarter was due on June 15th. I have no idea why because the quarter ends at the end of June, but you have to pay your quarterlies on June 15th. <laughs> uh, the next one, likewise, is due on September 15th, which is 15 days before the quarter ends. But the last one's not due till January 15th. <laughs> good that's, that's good good logical sense i don't make it out yeah <laughs> i'm sure there was a reason for that that makes sense to somebody i'm sure right i'm sure there was a logical reason behind i have a that. theory what, what is I have it? a theory because the federal government's fiscal year ends on september 30th and i think they changed the third quarter from october 15th to september 15th to get it in before the end of the fiscal year make it look better and then I think all the states said, well, hey, ours ends on June 15th. How about moving the July 15th to June 15th? Now, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, but think, that's my theory. I think you're actually right. <laughs> yeah. Now, this can all be solved, straightened out, if Mike Height gets on finance committee. Mike Height is on finance committee. <laughs> that's why our problem is, Rob. That's why we, we've circled around to the kernel of the problem. Mike, why are you talking? You're distracted from the show. <laughs> 
My apologies, Admiral. <laughs> Kenny, thanks so much for coming in. How do people get in touch with You're you for more welcome. information? You can reach me at 304-263-1100. And I appreciate your intros this morning, sir. Thank Especially you. since I was eating a lot of good Italian food during yeah. those intros. <laughs> 831, and the crew joins us next. This segment of the show brought to you.